Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, to the greatest podcast on earth. Step right up and experience the magnificence that is the Two Ring Circus Podcast. You'll gasp. <gasps> you'll laugh. <laughs> And you'll be amazed at what comes next. Amazing. Don't worry about the smell. It's just the stars of our show, Tom Italiano. Oh, hello. And Matt Fletcher. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Happy birthday, Matthew. Oh, thanks, champ. Today, it's the 12th of July, <clears throat> 2018. Yes. And Matt's finally turned 38. Yes, and so... Um, Happy birthday. But it's not the 12th of July in real life. Oh, but it, it is... In real life, sorry, oh, it is. Oh, God, it's... it's yeah. Yeah. You're doing what I used to do. You told me to stop doing it. Huh. Oh, if you're listening to this now, you know, I used to do that thing with the podcast, and now you've adopted... You do it better than I do, but, you know, you've refined it somewhat. Ah. Hey, happy birthday. I got you some red paper. Oh, thanks, man. I've always wanted some red paper. Hey, you know what? I wrapped a present the other day. Obviously not this one, but for someone else. Mm. And I, I don't know how or why, but I only had double-sided sticky tape available. <laughs> so I wrapped it with double-sided sticky tape. Of course you did. And it, like, it was beautiful. <laughs> like, I think the gift was actually the wrapping. Yeah. So if anyone needs... Oh, because it, so it had no... It yeah, had no, so it just went like this. Like, it went... Yeah, and it okay. just opened like one of those things, you know, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's your name? M A T T spells Matt. <laughs> it was like that. It wasn't really like that. Yeah, red, you can keep that paper for something else. Thanks, man. Yeah, I got your book because I buy people I love books. Mm, you do? Yeah. Um, that's not to say if I buy you something that's not a book, uh, I don't love you. Um, this book is called No! Mm. The power of disagreement in a world that wants to get along. And I figured that was uh, an appropriate subject matter given how often you and I look at each other and go, like we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Uh-huh. I feel like that's how you look at me often. We like to get along at home or in the workplace. We don't want to hurt people or offend. Famous management gurus argue that harmony, cohesiveness and agreement are the main building blocks for effective decision making and creativity but they are wrong. Oh, here we go. Hmm? Oh. Do you want to give me that book? <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> I'll summarise it for you so you don't have to read it. Yeah, right. Okay. I okay. just fi- I figure you're one Beautiful. of those people too that is, is kind of a bit of a busy cat and you end up taking stuff on board when sometimes maybe you, you, you would want to say no because you're busy. Oh. And so, because of whatever the situation is, like, um, like I mean, could, could pragmatically, we d- it's easier just to go ahead. Also, we suffer, I think, not suffer, we don't like suffer, but we, uh, as musicians, we're in the mindset of saying yes to things as often as possible because of the way the gig world is, which is like, well, well I better... Well, we I, are. Well, I better take I better take that gig and try and fit in that third gig on Saturday because well I don't have anything next Saturday so I don't know if anything's going to come up so I I better just take the opportunity when I can and uh, I think we do that much less than we used to but I still think it's a holdover from the, yeah, the days right. so, so and I do think that spills over into other other aspects of our lives. Um, it might not be true for you. You might not be like that. Yeah, right, that's interesting. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Um, like that. So, I don't know. Mm, okay. Uh, speaking of busy cats, I also have a game here called Cat Chaos. I don't know what the game is, but yeah. there's four little cats with cat names on the back. Yep, Notorious C-A-T. <laughs> Fordry Hepburn. Oh, that's oh, good. That's, that's good, yeah. isn't it? Luke Skywhisker. David Meowie. What's right. the chances of actually having Cat Stevens in there? <laughs> and Mr. Meowgi. Pretty good. <laughs> Cat Stevens. Oh, the Perminator. That's good. <laughs> Harry Potter. Good. Okay. So, I don't know what the game is, but it looks cute. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm excited. 
this might be something I can actually play with um, with Becky and not have her break out. What should what in hives? Oh, does she not like games? <laughs> she loves games. Uh, allergic to cats. Ah. Uh, yep. Maybe she just needs to be around your cat more. Mm. No. No, that doesn't seem to have helped. Poor thing. I oh, know it's the worst. Poor thing. No, it's the worst. Oh. What you just did then? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like I want to open this now, but that's not that's not great listening material. So we'll, <laughs> it we'll might come, be depending on what you read. We'll come back to that. Yeah. Don't just read the instructions. You can read the names of the cat characters. All right, you have a chat while I try All and right. work out how to get into this thing. Uh, today was Thursday. I wrote a song today. Did you? Yeah. I think I'm on a roll. I think you are too. On a song roll. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's any good, but that's better than being on a bog roll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we probably, it's not even funny to make jokes about bog roll. Why? Well, oh, now that England are out of the World Cup. Oh, whatever. Couldn't happen to a nicer one. It's such a silly sport, man. Soccer? Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, nothing happens. That's why hooliganism happens, I reckon. Because they're just so frustrated and annoyed and they just start hitting and breaking stuff because... Nothing's happening. The, I, I don't. We don't even ever need to play this game. Because we, we just read them to each other. Yeah. All right. Here you oh, you take the other I'll, stack. I'll do the other stack. Uh-huh. We just. All right. This podcast is literally going to be. A uh, hundred. A hundred cards. A hundred cat cards. All right. You go first. Cattley Portman. Oh, it's good. Uh, so Luke Skywhisker. Oh, yeah. hang on. There's four of those. It's yeah. a clearly a game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is great. Cool. Clearly a game. Yeah. What you got? Cindy Clawford. Oh, good. Yeah. Fuzz Aldrin. <laughs> oh, that is great. good. Yeah. Oh, mine's even better though. Yeah. Because it because um oh, by the way they're in costumes. <laughs> I got Uma Thurman. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, David Miawi. We've yep. already done that. Yep. Ah, uh, Cat Stevens. Well done. Yeah, I knew it was going to be there. Yeah, but that's uh, good. Like they didn't mess with it. Harry Potter. It's like when I do um. Porno movie names. What do you mean? You know, when you just take like mainstream titles and then turn them into. Oh, like Star Horse. Like Star Horse. Like they did in like Zach Shaving... and Mary Makes Porno. Did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's what they called it, Star Horse. Shaving Ryan's Privates. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah cool. And yes. Lord of the Rings. It's funny because you don't change it. You don't change it. it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, Cats and Nova. <laughs> <laughs> Catrick Swayze. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> and he's oh. doing that. Oh, Surely that means you can have Catrick Stewart. Santa Claus. Oh, that's good. Oh, lovely. <laughs> this is Kidney good. Spears. Oh, that's good. Fidel Castro. <laughs> Best. <laughs> Moggy Osborne. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, we've already <laughs> said those ones. We don't have to do those again. <laughs> William Shakespeare. <laughs> that's great. Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams. Good. Pablo Picasso. <laughs> Yours are quite highbrow. Yeah, yeah. That's because of... I've got Kitty Minaj. Yeah. Cat's got a massive ass. Cattley Portman. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the two from... Oh, so, you, yeah, because yeah, okay. there's four of each and you got two from mine because there was only two over here. Jude Paul. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Paul and Freeman. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Best. All right, I look forward to playing whatever the game is. Claudia Carvin. She's not in the game, I just made no, that up. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Thanks. Lawrence Fishburne. Very good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Porrence Fishburne, sorry. Porrence Fishburne. Yeah, but it's it's a double yoker. Ah, very good. Yeah. Um, You're thinking, weren't I'm you? thinking, I'm You've trying, I'm trying to think I'm going for I'm trying to think of people's they'll just they'll just pop up during the podcast. They will. Yeah. The podcast. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's good. <coughs> Thank you, mates. No worries. That's exciting. It's fun. Actually, we don't ever have to that's, play it. We can, it's fun. You can put a Stella on that eBay was now. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I played the game of life the other night. Oh. Did I tell you this? Is it still shit? I'd never played it before. Oh, was it shit the first time for you? Well, um. I, I've never, I never liked it. I didn't know the rules. Ah, I read the rules carefully, but not carefully enough. So we got to the end of the game and all the action cards were unused. And then it was, my life. It, was pointed out, <laughs> it was pointed out that all the action cards are unused. Does, do you think anybody actually plays board games correctly? 
Because lots of games have lots of rules that I think people just go, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, Monopoly's that one where it seems to be that more people than, than not play the, you get all the fine money when you land on free parking. Oh. Oh, really? you never well, heard that I, one? I, I haven't played it for so long, I can't even remember. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Been a long time. Yeah. I used to play games all the time. Liz mm. and I played games almost daily. <laughs> Did you? We played, we played Boggle to the point of... Um, Moggle. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Scrabble? Just don't have to change it? <laughs> Scrategories? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Are we just going to cat everything? Yeah. This? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a cat cast. That's good. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had some small children doing cat puns at me during the. No, they weren't doing cat puns. I was doing cat puns at them while they did cat meows and faces oh. at me. It was right in front of me. Yeah. Just random. Yeah, because they knew I liked cats. Hey, you know how it's your birthday? It reminded me. I looked mm. up. There are some famous people that have their birthdays today. You wanna, Is that what you were do doing? Do you want to know who some of them are? Um, some of them are. There's lots of famous people I've never heard of, which I don't know how famous they can be. I mean, obviously, they're famous to some people. Um, before you do that, yes, yep. I was. So I had a meeting yesterday um, with the production team at Dracula's mm. for the new Queensland show, of which I am the musical director. It still makes me laugh. <laughs> I got a meeting with Dracula's. <laughs> How many? Three. Ah, 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 ah. Um, and one of their acts in the show that's going up to Queensland yes um, is kind of a bit of a best of now that they're only doing the one because the one oh, yeah. here closed yep. and they're doing the 27 Club is their finale oh right yeah crikey yeah, yeah. Um, but when you actually look at the list of people in the 27 Club it's actually not that many famous ones ah that like mainstream everyday people know like there's the ones that everyone knows like Kurt Cobain, Cobain. Yeah. Jim Morrison Kat Cobain Amy <laughs> <laughs> Amy Wine Meowse. Oh, good. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, uh, now, now it looks like I'm trying to think of the part. I'm actually trying to think of the person. Um, mm, Katniss Joplin. Doesn't work. I oh, know. Um, yeah. And uh, Brian Jones. From? Rolling Stones. Yeah, right. Yeah, even that's hard. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So then, like, I think Robert Johnson. The blues oh, guy yeah, was okay. one, yeah. But like, yeah. so all of a sudden, the Twenty Seven Club. It's like all these famous people. That how many <laughs> famous people? The five of yeah, the songs okay. that we're going to do. So yeah. So go on, famous people. I know one. I uh, guess who? Eric Carr from Kiss. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Do you know Topher Grace? Yes. He's a good actor. I like him. He's very good. Uh, from all kinds of films. Yeah, but what's the thing I know him from? Well, I don't know. Uh, the t- that seventy show. No. Nah. that. Okay. Uh, Go on. Other films. Go on. I don't know. He was in a really good film with Dennis Quaid. I don't know the name of it, but I liked it. Okay. Uh, good. So there's all these famous people who I don't know, so I'm not going to say their names. But um, you'll like... <laughs> Is it Eric Carr in there? Not yet. Well, I'm just continuing to scroll. Okay. Wow, you scrolled a long way, dude. Yeah, well, you know. It's a Am small I there? S- it's a small screen. Um, After all. I don't know. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez? She's the surly looking actress lady who's in all those Fast and Furious films. Oh. Yeah. Is she? She's, she's the But not in this photo. She's lovely. Look. No, no. That's the sister is someone else. She's the wifey is girlfriend that thing. Bill Cosby? Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Bill Catsby. <laughs> the great Catsby. He's not. No. Well. I think we can all agree. Isn't that sad? Uh, Charlie Murphy? Eddie's brother? Is he? Yeah, actually Eddie's well, it was, yeah. Was? He passed away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a nice game. Go yeah. on, what else you got? You're doing very well. Any You're other clearly stars? the nicest person out of all of these. Uh, Richard Simmons! Oh. Yeah. There we go. There's no one else famous. You are literally the second famous person I know on that list. And Eric Carr's not on there? No. Hmm. Who's Eric Carr? The drummer from Kiss. Yes, he was the fox. Ah. Yeah, right. Who was the cat? Peter Chris. There you go. Hmm. I was just trying to keep the theme mm-hmm. going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, 
Richard Simmons. There was a podcast called Searching for Richard Simmons. Uh huh. Yeah. Was it good? Um, like so many, um, a kind of mystery, true mystery unraveling podcasts, like a lot of the true crime stuff. Like even, um, because I was big into, not Shit Town, what was the one before that? No idea. Um, Bog Town? <laughs> no, uh, uh, like Serial. And they did a couple of. Okay. You must be aware of this. I've got you're no idea what so, you're talking about. I actually have no. So, I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Come on. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was at someone's house last night and MasterChef came on and I said, oh, is this MasterChef? Because I, I, I have never seen it. Yeah, but you're aware of its existence. Yeah, but I don't know what that is. So. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Yeah. I thought it would have somehow come across your desk what, in the what last is it? three years. What is it? It's a cereal. Well, I, I'm familiar with cereal, but <laughs> can't get a body like this without cereal. <laughs> um, but there was uh, my my ultimate disappointment with those is that they don't actually have a conclusion. Ah, because they're cereal. It, well, yeah, but but they. I could finish a box of cereal. <laughs> like it's, um, <laughs> Five it's often flat. a really unsatisfactory ending. Like like in the searching for Richard Simmons one. Like it was really. Because he was a huge figure in the <laughs> tiny, but a huge, a tiny, huge figure in the eighties. You know the um, the health thing. Yeah. Like it, when when all of a sudden in the eighties it became like with the Jane Fonda yeah, and all aerobics that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Um, and he was like this tiny, larger than life character, and like camp as a row tense, but um, <laughs> always very like that was never really spoken about. It's just um, kind of like Liberace, like. Clearly, it's obvious, but no one seemed to yeah. even talk about it. Yeah, it was part of an act. Should be. So it was. Yeah, I guess so. so yeah, it, it wasn't like it was. Um, yeah. But ultimately, after episodes and episodes and episodes, which is, um, they they finally tracked him down, and he was, you know, like alive and just didn't want to see anyone. Like, oh. like Sean Connery. What? God. What? Sean Curry disappeared off the face of the earth. He's retired and no one's seen him for years. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Nah, he yeah. was out just recently. Doing what? He was. I mean, what some, would I know? <laughs> he was at some thing. Just no, I just feel like he's done. Ago. He's done with, with acting, and so yeah. you just don't. Like he might be at a thing because yeah, he right. went out for dinner or for a, a show or something. But you just think, hey, I haven't seen Sean Connery in a film for ages. Yeah. It's because he hasn't made one for ages. Yeah. yeah. And I, I liked him. He was good. Yeah, it was my favourite Indiana Jones he movie. Does he strike? Oh yeah. Yeah. Does he strike you? What? Crystal Skull? No. Oh. No. Last Crusade. He was in that though, wasn't he? No. Oh, was he not in Crystal Skull? No. Didn't he been in for like ten years? No. Don't mix those films up. They're they're worlds apart. Did you say reprise or reprise? I think I said reprise. Do you? Yeah. So do I. I yeah. use it in a song. And it yeah. has to be the word reprise, because it's the one that rhymes. Yeah. Well, what did you with, say reprise? You'd say reprieve, not repr Yeah, I've heard people say reprise. I would say they've pronounced it unusually. Uh, yeah. Unusually? Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. I'm pleased. I misspelled unusually. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unusually, yes. Okay. Good, good talk. That's like arcting, arcting for something. It's, it's, it's hard to it's say. Hard to do it's hard if to it's not it what you do. Yeah. Uh, um, Sean Connery, who else has disappeared? Uh, off the scene, kind of gone. Other than um, people who are mm. persona non grata. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Don't know. Yeah, you do. Oh, I can't think of any. None that I wish to come back. Uh, no, I like Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Is she the one that? Just stopped acting. Who's Meg, the one that's Meg married? Ryan has. Benji, that's who I meant. Yeah. No, that's not who I meant. Yeah, she, she's... Benji Madden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, that's who I was I thinking I think she's of. done stuff. Meg Ryan's not done anything for ages. Yeah. 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 Mm. Was she in Sleeping in Seattle? Sleepless. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sleeping in Seattle would have been a completely different film. <laughs> it would like... Imagine that. It would have been it's a lot of rain. There's it would have been, else it would have been a short. It would have been a short film. Sleeping in Seattle. It's a non-porn version of <laughs> Sleeping in Seattle. <laughs> I really, I really like that film. It's terribly 
It's a terrible film. No, is it? Like, it, well, yeah. I mean, it's got two adorable, lovely lead actors and a cute kid. Um, Who's in it? I don't know who the kids. Is. No. Well, it's Tom Hanks and Nick oh. Ryan. Oh, um, I'm thinking of When Harry Met Sally, which is amazing. It's it still is great, isn't it? Fucking great. I watched it about six months ago. Did you? It's hilarious. Huh. It's so good. It's a really good script. Um, I this went is a to birthday see because we were upstairs at the Elephant and Wheelbarrow before my Thursday night gig, oh. and I went over to ask the boss if we could utilise the upstairs area. And he wished me happy birthday, and he said, "Just go, go get yourself a beer." And I went over to the bar, and I said, "So uh, I asked for a beer and a soda water for you because you're healthy." I oh, know this and is birthday beer as well. Yep, it's good. Yep. Um, beer clear, like Coke clear. Oh, fucking hell! Yeah, if I could invent that, it would go. It, what? Yeah. Beer clear. Yeah. But why? I think people would uh, appreciate the clearness of it. <laughs> would you just call it clear? Did you call it clear beer? Yeah. Yeah. No, but pint of clear, please. No, you call it Claire Bear. That's what you call it. Claire Bear? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, it would be fine in Canada. <sighs> I'm sorry. So I asked Not for everything I say is hilarious, you know. No, I know we were Clearly. talking it. <laughs> uh, uh, and she brought it over and I said, Simon, Simon says he's paying for that. And she said, did he? So, yeah, no, he really did. Yeah. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And put your hands on your hips. Gotcha. <laughs> That'd be funny. We should try that. Um, so in the last podcast that came out today, which people have listened to because we got some feedback on yes, it already, we, uh, we mentioned that we were going to do uh, a how to host a murder type night. So we now have two options for venues. I think this could be a good spot. Matt is concerned because he thinks that, don't we have to hide? <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Um, I make no apologies for my misunderstanding. Although... I think it, I think it was beautiful and disarming, my misunderstanding. I, I think it's lovely as well. But I, I do want to let everyone know who um, is listening who might end up coming. If we do a How to Host a Murder Night and um, you don't see Matt there, it's because he good. still thinks we have to hide. <laughs> so I'll be somewhere He'll in the room. He'll be somewhere in the room. Like under a table or something. Oh, you can't see me! You can't see me! <laughs> like a like a five-year-old playing hide and seek, just me, with my, paw, with my paws over my eyes. <laughs> Shut up! Embarrass what do you in think? Front of all my friends. Um, let me let me ask you a question. <laughs> um, what do you think is the general public fascination with uh, murder mystery type things? And I say that. Uh, television shows like all those television shows because so I mean surely 20 to 30 percent of television shows are based around solving who killed someone yeah and well the number one and two podcasts in the world are true crime podcasts yeah and parodies of true crime podcasts <laughs> great so people are certainly fascinated with, with true crime stuff yeah 100% so why do you think that is? Um, What's your vibe? Uh, I think people love to unravel a mystery. Like they, whodunits have always been a thing. But if they can be based in some sort of truth as well, then there's a real kind of, like there's some actual, like there's actual danger to it. It's not just Hercule Poirot looking for, you know, the butler, because we already know. But yeah. I mean, that's, that's... What, why do you think? I feel like you've probably already got a theory. No, I don't, I don't think I do. I, it no? Literally, no, I, um, the question came up as, as we were just talking. So, on the fly, um, I, th- I kind of think there's an element of how how aware we all are of how close we are of potentially doing something like that. Nah. And so there's really? a, but like it's, it's like a, that thing, you know, um, oh, he was a family man. You know, they try and people try to try to say, he just seemed like a normal member of the community. And then he, you know, went home one day and just snapped. Yeah. And, okay. And I think, um, so much of the, so much of the crime shows anyway, uh, are, are that they're solving, they're not solving mastermindy, Type Hannibal Lectory genius killers. They're 
they're putting together the pieces to find out how a normal person ends up in a yeah, okay. sticky no, yeah. situation. Actually, I think you're um, 100% correct. And I do think there's an element of... There's, there's a... Not necessarily of how close one as an individual is to doing it, but certainly how close your neighbour is. Like, as in how easily it could affect you because because it was the guy next door, because it was the the person who just kept yeah. to himself and just did but his it's, own it's thing. Just... Oh, he said hello, and I said hello to him when he was yeah. out in his front yard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone, we, we don't think about this kind of thing very often, and I don't, believe it or not, don't think about this very often, but obviously we're in the conversation now. But you think about how many um, things we use on a daily basis which we use for their intended purpose. So like we drive our car to get to places or to pick things up or whatever and we use a hammer to hammer a nail into a wall or a screwdriver to screw a screw in or a knife to spread some butter on a piece of bread. We, we kind of have this idea of this is what this thing is, what this thing is, but practically anything else, everything that we have has multiple uses and in extreme circumstances those almost everything we have the uses we have can be awful mm-hmm. um, and it's you never really you never I mean I honestly have never <laughs> I've never held a hammer and gone I wish this person would shut up <laughs> and then gone oh because like oh I could just make them shut up that would work don't <laughs> But that's how. Yeah. I mean, so when you when you think about, I guess the the, the ability for people to make entertainment out of exploring how these things can happen, and, and often the ones that are most interesting are the ones that are. We had an argument, and she slipped and hit her head, and I didn't know what to do, and so I. You know, I, you know, I was a construction worker, so I put her in the cement slab. You know, and it, it was an accident. But and then, and often, what happens there is you kind of in those stories, you go, "This thing was an accident," and then, the way I decided to solve the problem is where the crime was. Do, do you know, like yeah, the yeah. actual crime. Yeah. You know. Um, yep. And so, I, I say that because that's that's that happens in a film that I saw recently. Hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, that guy's just made a whole bunch of bad decisions. He made so many bad decisions. Now he doesn't know how to make a good one. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I well, that's the nature of lying, isn't it? Tell yeah, a lie, yeah. and you just have to compound it with more lies to cover up the first one. Oh, until, surely, yeah. Until you're down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Down the lying rabbit hole. Lion? Rabbit? Oh, is that your cat pun for this no, part of the not. podcast? No, I said cat at hole. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> that Cabot Cove. Recovery. That was where... Uh, <laughs> I can't speak today. That was where... What's her name was? What? Who? Murder, she laughed, chick. Murder, she wrote. <laughs> uh, Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury. Ah. Yeah, Cabot Cove. Right. Rabbit hole, Cabot Cove. <laughs> Murder, she wrote. Um, that's, Murder, she wrote's right around the time of all those other TV shows my grandmother used to watch. Oh, yeah. And... Um, my grandmother had just, you know, random different names for everything because she was, you know, Italian and spoke English in her own way. And for Starsky and Hutch, she had Stritsky and the other one. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, not Starsky and Hutch. You know, Stritsky and the other one. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't watch a lot of TV when I was growing up, but certainly I, I realise now in retrospect that shows that my parents... Uh, hated me watching because they thought they were trite and pointless. Um, now I see as an adult and realise they are indeed trite and pointless. Oh, like what? Oh, I can't even think, but just... Like Lois and Clark. I love Lois and Clark. <laughs> it's trite and pointless. Is it? Oh, it's... Yeah, occasionally you catch it and you go... Oh, I like The Flash. That was good. It was, wasn't it? I think it was good. Yeah. 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 I liked Quantum Leap. Never, I've never seen an right. episode. Yeah, I'm like aware that. of its work. Yeah, but I've never seen any part of an episode. I just I loved MacGyver, but I don't like the new version. Never seen oh, MacGyver. Right. It's bad. 
New but one. I didn't see the old one either. But okay. yeah, yeah. But again, like I don't, I don't remember Dean Anderson is. Yeah, I don't remember if it was good, but I liked it. Yeah. I was never a sci-fi guy either. Never a really a sci-fi TV. Sit- um, again, aware of its work, never yeah, watched okay. it. Yeah, wow. Love so Project. no, I really never watched a lot yeah. of TV. I was I was the kid at school, like because um, I spent a lot of time overseas as well, yeah, growing up yeah. and and working. Like before I came to Melbourne, where I was over, I was um, even when I was in Dubai, there was still only um, Dubai. Yeah, maybe. Um, there was still only kind of one English-speaking TV channel, oh, and, it showed, then, yeah. and it showed stuff like Dynasty, oh. but not because it was new at the time, just because that's what they was. Do Americans call Kiss's album Dynasty Dynasty? Dynasty. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Which is weird because they go to eat at the diner. They have dinner at the diner, which is weird. I mean, it's spelled differently, but. Is Dinah Shore a pun? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It depends what you eat at a restaurant near the beach. <laughs> I imagine you can't eat prehistoric animals, so yeah, Dinah Shore would be a pun if you could. If you ate alligator or shark at a restaurant near the beach, that would be a Dinah Which I have eaten yeah. both. There you go. Not yeah. the same time. Yeah. Is there a person What's called What's the most Dinosaur? exotic thing you've eaten? Oh. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it a thing. <laughs> I mean, I didn't swallow. <laughs> oh. When we... That was the most appropriately timed sip of a drink I've ever had. That's what she said. When we finish, mm. I'm going to tell you what I resisted with all my might to say at that point. Oh, good. Go on. Excellent. Podcast outtakes. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Really? Yeah. I don't. I, I don't recall thinking. Oh, this is something I'm going to remember forever. As emu. Like, I've eaten emu. It's not exotic, is it? Mm, well, I yeah. think it is. See, I don't think crocodile. Uh, I've had crocodile. Huh. I, uh, I might have had alligator something in New Orleans. Really? Yeah, I think I probably did. Wow. Okay. Um, see, I don't think animals. I, I don't think animals are exotic to eat. I think because I eat animals, like, but I've never had anything that I would that, that wasn't farmed to be eaten. Like, I, like I haven't had. Oh, this is wild caught lion or something like that. Like, well, I mean, of course, the, I, I would find that wild. He was furious. Uh, furious. <laughs> um. <laughs> I love the idea that you might one day go to a restaurant that has wild caught lion on the menu. I don't like that because I. Th- you know what I mean? Yeah, I. Um, Just those words to describe the, the dish. Although, there's, there's something to be said about eating uh, and hunting some animals that are, we would consider even endangered, depending on how they are affecting the population of their other species in the area. Like, you know, like an old elephant that can't breed anymore that's going around, like, killing young bull elephants or something like that. And it's like, Can they do that? Well, I think, I think they can, yeah. I think do they? Like, a, like an old... Um, like a senile like an old, elephant? Old, like a cheetah or like something like that who's going around eating clubs but can't breed anymore. So, yeah, they do. Do they do that? Yeah, wild animals do crazy shit like that. Yeah. They're wild, man. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Hmm. All right. David yeah. Rabbit Burr? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not really. Wouldn't his name just be David Warren? That's his alias. I've eaten frog. Uh, yeah, I've eaten frog. I've eaten um, bullfrog. Not frog's legs, but bullfrog. Oh, right. Um, where the, the, the frog... And the skin was served separately. Oh, that's odd. China. Okay. Most of the most of the unusual things in which I've partaken, food-wise, <laughs> um, have been have been while I was living in China. Like I a, haven't like done any of, of the kind of uh, you know fried grasshopper cockroaches kind of things. I've done those. Do. So I've done chicken feet. 
Yeah, that just doesn't look appetising. And it's not. Yeah. Is it like fries the point of cr- quite crunchy, yeah. chewy? Yeah, no, you still got to take the flesh oh, off right. the... Yeah. Yeah, that's not... Talon. Yeah. Look, I'm all for... Uh, like, I'm all for using every bit of yeah. the animal. Yeah, like, yeah. 100%. Um, but, uh... Uh, so, which leads me to my purchase this week. I bought a meat grinder <laughs> because um, I'm getting more and more worried about that hammer story now. <laughs> well, because I, I told you what I said when I was in the shop, and she didn't. Oh, I didn't. Maybe I didn't tell you. You did. I was. I did. Feigning. Are we? For, for that, the purpose yeah. of. I thought maybe you were tired and hungover and needed to go home or something, but there's no one here. Um, yeah. So I went and bought a meat grinder, and there was not. There wasn't one on display, and she was looking. for for it. It's like, oh, there'll be a box somewhere here. It's not a... No, it's an electric one. Yeah. I could have just bought one of those, but they didn't have it. I would have, if it had been cheaper. Um, but it wasn't there. And she said, what, what do you want a meat grinder for? And I said, why? Well, you know, I've got an ex that can be a bit of trouble. And she didn't bat an eyelid and didn't even snigger. I was like, I just, I was, I'm joking. No, I just want to... Like, I want to buy the cheaper, fattier cuts of meat, but they're harder to eat, but they're better for you. And I was, So I make mince out of them. Um, cause I don't fattier cuts of meat are good for you mm. and discuss not well, you oh okay well I'm not going to discuss because of course my friends and my family uh, don't want me to um, go on long arduous for them tirades <laughs> about um, food and eating habits but um, if anyone wants to come over for dinner I've I I will will make food for you that you will want to eat as opposed to what I'm eating. What did you mince up? Um, Really fatty steak. Mm -hmm. I can't remember whatever it was. It was like... What did you do with it? Like made it into patties? No, I just just fried fried up the mince and just ate it. Yeah. Fuck, you're turning into Ralph Thomas. Oh, really? Why? Because that's what he does. Yeah. He seems like a pretty healthy guy. Oh yeah, he's he's got a clean clean diet. Well, he's, like he looks, he's all protein. Yeah, though. Well, okay. There's a lot of f- and really lean protein, but still. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm not. No, I'm all about fat. Well, he's a muscle guy, so chicken is crucial. That's his phrase. Chicken is crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Yeah, he's got massive boobs. Bo- boobs. From all the hormones. Is that? Does that have boobs? What? Is that? No, of course no. he doesn't. <laughs> Good talk. It's hard work. <laughs> um, uh, did well, you come up here specially? Not up here to the third floor, but up well, here to the city. Both specially? of those things, yes. To do this yeah. podcast, yes. To yeah. save me from having to go down to Lara. Well, no. Um, so, for reasons that we don't have to discuss, I, uh, we we would usually do this early in the week, but um, well, this is going to be about the hammer again. No. <laughs> Not the, and meat, the, grinder and the meat grinder. Yeah. Um, that was the first um, draft of the uh, Russian flag, by the way. <laughs> Just didn't look right. <laughs> um, that's a shame about your gag falling flat. Now maybe she just didn't get it. It wasn't high brow though, and I I didn't deliver it in a in a way that was subtle. It was like she actually thought I was weird. It was clearly a joke, and she was looking at me. It wasn't like she went, what? Like, yeah. I mean, it is clearly a joke. Yeah, yeah. Is this just, a, a, again, just a measure of how we've lost our sense of humour? I know there's been some terrible things that have happened recently, blah, 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 blah. But if I was, look... How's <laughs> that diminishing I, I, the terrible things that have happened, blah, 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 blah? Well, you know, it's still the best, safest time to be alive. It is? Yeah. Look, yeah. if I was, if I was going to dispose of a person, like via the use of a meat grinder. I wouldn't just walk into the good guys and buy a cheap cambric one off the shelf. Well, dude. Like, Dom hiding in plain sight Italiano here right. with you tonight. To be fair, my most recent ex-girlfriend is living in the desert right now and no one's seen her for three or months. Or is she? <laughs> so, or is she? Or Maybe is she's she? living with Sean Connery. Oh, she might be. <laughs> ah, good. Yes. Well done. She's in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes. <laughs> wow. She's camping. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, meat grinder thing. Um, it's not a catastrophe. To, 
Is that a line from the film? No. Is that a word that you think you sound no, a lot like Sean Connery when you say? I haven't shared a cat word for a while. No, I don't know what that was. That's me I, almost sounding like Liam Neeson. Well, you have got a particular set of skills. Well, I do have a particular set of skills. <laughs> I just raise my eyebrow in a suggestive way for people who are actually listening and not watching. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if any of our podcast listeners, at some point during the audio version of the podcast, podcast go, I've got to fucking go and have a look at what was actually happening in that part of the conversation, see what the exchange was. Yeah. I wonder if they go, hang on, what was it? 43 minutes. All right, we'll go there. Yeah, I guarantee no one has done that. Yeah, okay. Um, they've probably listened to it and thought, this is really frustrating. I wish I knew, but uh, they haven't. I do that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. Huh? I watch and listen to... So the ones that do video and the ones that do audio, I will I will go between both. Yeah. Because sometimes the tone of voice, and then, particularly if the conversations get heated and you want to see what... we don't. You and I don't usually get heated very often. No, no. But sometimes what have we got to keep Well, we're, we're we're mates, but a lot of podcasts are people getting guests on, and uh, that's true. You know, pushing yeah. each other's buttons. Yeah. Well, I listen to Bill Maher a lot. Oh, and there's a lot. I of couldn't. That. I'm impressed. You can. Yeah. He's he's a he's a very intelligent idiot. <laughs> I think he's a very smart guy, mm-hmm. and he's a, he's a great talker. Mm-hmm. But um, he's a bit of a jerk. Really? Yeah. Really? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And there's no way in my mind that he possibly hates Trump as much as he says he does because that guy is milking it to death. And it's like it's like all those comedians, all those comedians and celebrities, they're all, they love that they've got someone to talk about. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And it's, got, it's, a, it's at the point now where they do it so much, you go, it's actually disingenuous now, this whole, like, we don't like what the president's doing kind of thing. Um, not that we need to talk about American politics too much, but I do. it is amazing to me that... Um, I, I, I made mention of this. When the Kevin Rudd-Julia Gillard fiasco was happening in Australian politics, I, if ever I was going to comment about it, I always made a point of referring to them by their proper names as the Prime Minister or by their full names. I just... They just call him the, Trump. Because the disrespect... I don't know. Do I just mean two wrongs don't make a right? Like, you can I disagree with someone. You can uh, have an opposing point of view. But they still... By, by virtue of their office, they still deserve a level of respect by virtue of I don't know by virtue of them just being a human being they deserve more respect than just being kind of reduced to a single syllable yeah, utterance that's true um, and, and you just there's never been in, in my memory there's never been a president in history that has an American president in history that has been so openly mocked and maligned as Donald Trump has been like it's what I, what I it's, find, it, like, what I find, borderline treasonous. Like, you, you, if you go oh, back okay. to a president that people <coughs> liked more universally yeah. liked and admired, yeah. if you were one of the dissenters in that yeah. situation, you, there'd have been an outcry. Yeah, I, I, what I find really interesting about about that, and even in Australian politics, but not you know, much, to a much lesser degree, is how they don't understand that by. Um, being so forcefully um, mocking that the effect that has on some, on the people who don't share their opinion it just polar, it just polarizes and separates so much more that's certainly right? and something I, that um, has become really obvious in American politics yeah. now like the left has just yeah. but it's the same it's the same here it's like it's like uh, it, it, it's much much more advanced and uh, over there, but I, I think it's when um, you know when people who don't support whoever's in power here at any point in time, and they they talk about the politicians like th- and they say things like, "Oh, he's a he's a child murderer" or something like that, and you just go, 
any reasonable human being knows that that's not specifically true. Mm. And so any, even though you might have a point a, in a greater picture point, the fact that you want to be so sensa- sensationalist about it means that I do not care what you're saying. I don't even care about your point because you're not prepared to be reasonable um, and to approach it anything respectfully. Do you really just, dis- if someone was to use a phrase like that, would you just automatically dismiss everything else they had to say? Uh, about that, yes. Or I would say, if it was a conversation, I would say, I'm going to give you the opportunity to actually talk about okay. what you want to talk about, but if you want to be, if you want to be like over the top, and it's like, then you're not being reasonable. So the whole way to the whole way to try to get someone to win someone over and to get your point across is to be considerate of your audience and of say, like, in this situation, like you and I, right? So if we, if I feel strongly about something, let's say we go to the food thing, you know, the idea is for me, and you know. To, to be fair, I feel really st- strong about that and I do I get fired up about it. Um, but the, the best, well, it is not the most effective way for me to convey how I feel about it is to try and bludgeon you over the head with what I, like, verbally. Stop. <laughs> I'm not wrong, man. It's the hammer, dude. Stop yeah. talking about hammers. <laughs> is it making you feel sickle? <laughs> oh, no. Thanks. Um, and I think it's the same with the politics thing. It's like, yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's we live in an incredibly complex world, and guaranteed, whatever we think we have an opinion about, we don't know enough about it to know all the details. Mm. So the best approach is to, is to kind of assume you don't know all the details and assume that somebody else has something to contribute to this conversation that you're not aware of, and give them a space to do yeah, that yeah. in the conversation. And what happens often with political stuff or just just anything, you know, whether it's environmental or political or, you know, um, about, you know, gender and things like that, is that someone feels so strongly about it, and that's understandable because they're emotive topics, but they feel so strongly that they're not willing to explore an idea with you and they're, they're going to hit you over the head with what they think is right. Mm. And when you are verbally doing that to someone, it's, it's the, it's the most reasonable people will kind of take it for a while and then go, oh, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I, I certainly, I mean, as far as American politics go, and, and Bill Maher in particular, like I, I get a lot of my insight from listening to that show every yeah. week. I don't watch it. I don't do the HBO thing, yeah. but I listen to the podcast version of it. Because um, he does allow his guests to speak. He doesn't yeah, howl yeah, them does. down. No. And you do get... You do get Trump supporters on there. Like you yeah. do get, you know, the the he's very much a, I guess a libertarian more than anything, um, you know, pro marijuana, blah blah blah. But I do get to hear the other side, not, yeah. not just him saying Trump's an idiot. I mean, he does that a lot. Yeah, he does it a lot. But yeah, I mean that's okay. That that to, to me that's okay. Like it's like well actually I know where this guy stands. I mean maybe maybe there are less discerning listeners that listen to that and just subscribe to his every word. But that's not the, that's not the same thing as having critical thought about hearing an idea from someone that's either, true. is it? So. No. I just said, you know, he, he will say things. Is that, because like I said, he, you know, I've, I've heard him say, that's a really interesting thing, he's a smart guy and he's a good entertainer and you know, he does bring people on. But he will, he will occasionally say something like, you know, well, the best thing that can happen with this is, you know, we go into a recession and then, you know, then he gets voted out. It's like, you don't want to, you don't want to wish that on your country just to get rid of the guy. I mean, like, that's who you got. Like, like you got you got that guy, and half more than half the people, well, all right, half the population voted for him. So like, work together to do the best job you can. Yeah. Like, and that's the issue with the yeah. divisiveness that's happened in, yeah. in American politics. And that, I mean, but um, we've survived recessions. He yeah. Wasn't, he wasn't saying let's Abs- go back to square one. No, yeah, absolutely. People, res- people have survived recessions, but. Many people don't survive recessions because they're so bad for them that they kill themselves. They're like, you know, people okay. people don't people don't respond to 
reasonable economic growth the same way as they do when the industry shut down and their small business shuts down and they go bankrupt. It's, you know what I mean? Like it would, if, if you get a recession, what the thing is... And I'm, I'm old enough to remember when Paul Keating said that when, is, when, when the, yeah, the recession, the recession we had. We had to, well, that, I mean, uh, responding... And that, and that caused uproar. Responding to having a recession in that way is different to promoting maybe it's the best thing that can happen to us because yeah, yeah, fair enough. I, I don't think he said it's the best thing that can happen to us but you know it would prove this it's like actually maybe maybe having Trump as president and having it as a success does good things for the country in the sense of going right so this what you perceive to be a disaster if we actually still work together like you know we and we under, we maybe we can make make good of a bad situation and that's the attitude to have you know, and obviously being, you know, having a president, that doesn't actually change everything about the country, particularly there's 300 million people there. Well, yeah. It's a complex system. Uh, one person doesn't do that much stuff and making it out that it's such a disaster um, kind of throws up, ah, oh, well, we've got no responsibility. It's like, well, you do as, as, as individual citizens and as people in communities that Trump's decisions will probably, while he's in power, probably actually never have anything well, it'll have any impact. It'll have impact on some people, and of course that's how politics works, and you hope it does work that way, particularly if it's positive impact. But I think I think kind of sensationalising it like that is just shitty. Like, and um, particularly what it says to people who go, well, I live here and I chose to vote for him because the last eight years of having a democratic government actually made my life worse. Mm. And I'm not trying to make anyone else's life worse by voting for him, but I want my life to be better. And I don't believe that if we have the same party in, it will be better. Like that's a that's a reasonable thing to do with your vote if that's your experience. And people who have said that have been ridiculed in public. And it's it's like actually it's a really reasonable thing of to say. It is. It's a really reasonable thing to say. And just because the guy is a bit of a caricature and like the kind of stuff, it's like. Yeah, but he doesn't make all the policies, and it's not like not, that's not how government works. And the people who are on TV and you know and the journalists, they know that's not how that stuff works, but they still make it out. Do you think be. TC Electronics would have had an easier time of it if they called their um, their satchel delay pedal the pussy grabber instead of the pussy melter? Would it have an easier time of it, or do you think <laughs> it would have sold more? <laughs> Yeah, you, you, I assume you're across that. I'm not at all. Really? No. No, yeah, they've, yeah. So Satchel from, um, yeah, from Steel Panther. Steel Panther. Yeah. He has a custom delay pedal. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Called the Pussy Melter. Yeah. And there's been this outcry and petitions and all that sort of thing. So Fuck TC Electronics have removed it from sale, removed it from their Idiots. advertising. Idiots. Uh. Morons. Uh. <laughs> I mean, the company. Yeah, yeah, I know what so you mean. You got to leave it out there. That stuff's okay. I think it would have been worse if it was called the pussy grabber because that's a terrible thing. In the context of that, you want to if you like basically you know, like any with any animal, you have to you know, take, you have to invite it over, and if it wants to come and be patted. <laughs> Jesus, it's a metaphor, by the way. <laughs> it's totally a euphemism. Wow. Yeah, yeah, oh. just grab stuff, you pat it nicely with permission. Because for years when people have talked about blistering guitar solos, they've talked about face melters. Like, that's clearly what it's a take on. Yeah. That's, and it's Steel Panther. It's Steel Panther. I, I understand. Know, I know, it's no 2018. Context, man. But they're talking about the 80s. I don't know, it's... Yeah. I don't know, dude. What a world. What a world. Huh? Yeah. You should go do your gig. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go and... Uh, I'm gonna go watch a movie by myself. Because it's watch? Thursday night. I haven't decided whatever is on when I get there. Something with Luke like Skywhisker in it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I How actually, the time? I don't know what's out. I'm out, I'm out of touch. I might play that tonight. Good. Uh, Sonia, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy birthday, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Thanks for my gifts you're and welcome. my love. You're a good man. Hey, how was good was singing a happy birthday after midnight last night and everyone the whole gig who went bananas. That's pretty cute. They loved it. Yeah, that was that was pretty and nice. And people actually. coming up that you didn't even know saying, Thanks for spending your birthday with us. But they was drunk, but you know. They was drunk, but yeah. that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Someone um, messaged me today to wish me happy birthday and said, I hope you 
got spoilt today and I hope you oh. have the I hope you're taking the night off and I said I was spoilt my friend Katie took me out for lunch and gave me presents and um, I know I am actually I am working tonight and that's just like spoilt in another way that's how you like to do it man oh man and it's a good job it's why, yeah. it's called, it's why it's called the present because every day's a gift that's good I think that was the title of one of our podcasts I think it was the title of one of my um Magnetic poems a while ago. Well, it might have been why it was the title yeah. of the podcast. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Good night. See you later. <laughs> See you next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah whatever day that is, the 28th. Oh, no. I can't be the 28th next week. No, but the week oh, after God, they listen I'm to so this. Oh, God, I'm so confused. <laughs> All right. Slider biscuits. <laughs>